I'm Mark Helfrich, and this is Trailers from Hell. E.T., Back to the Future, Indiana Jones, Ghostbusters, Gremlins, Terminator, Footloose. There's so many Hollywood classics from the 1980s. And then there are classics of another sort. Last American Virgin, Life Force, Missing in Action, Enter the Ninja, Bolero, Bloodsport, Death Wish 2, Death Wish 3, Death Wish 4, Break in Two, Electric Boogaloo. All those films and so many more came out of Canon Films. So if you're a cinephile or if any of those classics hold a special place in your heart, then this documentary is for you. And I have to come clean. I'm in this documentary because for a time in the 80s, I worked at Canon Films. I edited Break-In. I edited Revenge of the Ninja. I even edited a film entirely in Hebrew, even though I don't speak a word of it. But that's the kind of place Canon was. It was crazy. And this is the film that proves it. Electric Boogaloo, the wild, untold story of Canon Films. Our agent, Marty Baum, said, look, if you guys want to just go make a film and be totally left alone, there are two new guys in town. Menachem Golden and Yoram Globus were the heavyweights. They were the George Foremans and the Muhammad Ali's of the indie market. This documentary chronicles the meteoric rise and the inevitable downfall of Canon. It's a cautionary tale, but it's also a zany, insane joyride. Basically, it's the story of two movie-loving Israeli cousins, Menachem Golan, the filmmaker, and Yoram Globus, the businessman. They came to Hollywood and they achieved their American dream. They became moguls of an independent film studio. They had a formula. Hire a star, knock off a script in a couple weeks, amp up the sex and violence, and rush it into production. They produced over 120 exploitation films in the 1980s. In 1986 alone, they made 43 movies. Most of them low budget and schlocky. Later, they made some higher budget films, but they were still schlocky. Sometimes we make better films, sometimes we, we don't make such good films, but we do make films. One of my first questions was, how much money do you think you'll be spending on it? And they said, oh, probably $10 million. I think they ended up spending about $3.75 on it. It's really an amazing story because Menachem and Yoram were so obsessed with making movies, yet they had so little regard for quality. They clearly love movies, they just weren't very good at making them for the American market. Everything we got would go in two piles for the two chucks, Bronson and Norris. This film is filled with outrageous behind-the-scenes anecdotes by former Canon filmmakers, actors, and employees. I can vouch for the integrity of many of these stories because I had the pleasure of working there, like I said. And it was a pleasure. I was grateful. Sure, it was a madhouse and a crazy place to work, but they made movies. Lots of them. And there's lots to be said for that. Sylvester Stallone showed up and he pointed up to Dolph. He goes, he gave that guy lines? This is our fight. I don't want innocent people to die. There's so much you're going to learn from this documentary. You'll learn that Menachem could speak to orangutans. Menachem's deciding whether to sign the orangutan to put him under contract. It was crazy, talking to a monkey. This would be an epic of cinema. You'll learn that director Michael Winner was pathologically sadistic. And you'll learn why Sharon Stone took a bath in urine. What's great is all these stories are accompanied by hilarious clips from the films they're talking about. It's hard to say words canon films without laughing. At the end of the movie, I had tears from my eyes. And then Ockham, he says, ha ha, I got you. I was crying because I saw my career going down the toilet and I didn't know what I was going to do next. Director Mark Hartley has made a documentary that's fun and funny and it dishes dirt. Electric Boogaloo. With a title like that, you know you want to see it. It comes out, you flush it, and you move on to another one. 